Okay guys, so this is our John Deere 490E excavator and dad got it several years ago at an auction, equipment auction, and brought it home and we've been using it, odd and stuff around the farm. We dig ditches with it and dug a basement with it and dug out ponds and creeks and stuff and it's always had a little troubles. Um, the computer on it is bypassed so it's just straight throttle and hydraulics but when you go to dig you have to be real sensitive on it or the hydraulics will kind of bind up and want to choke the motor down and um, I think I found a way to bypass that kind of put it in limp mode where it won't have as much speed but it won't bog the engine down and uh, we'll show you what we got going on with it I'll show you kind of what it's doing now how it operates show you some of the bypass that the previous owners did and uh, show you how to put it in limp mode and see what it does after that. So stick around and we'll see, see how she digs. You can see without much of a load on it it does okay you still kind of be a little little easy on it but when you go to to swing it'll really choke it down um, but when you're digging with it if you if you're putting you know a good load in the bucket it'll it'll bog down real easy so everything I'm reading um, said you can take out a plate on the bottom of the pump here and spin it 180 degrees put it back in and it'll kind of put it at like a 60% limp mode almost and it said it should be all the power where it won't choke out it just may not be as fast and that's that's fine for us um, all we're using is just around the farm we're not trying to make a living with it or anything so I'm gonna open this up and show you where that plate is and uh, take it off see if we can spin it around see if it changes anything so we're gonna open up this back panel <laughs> And this is our, our pump engine is on the other end of it. It's a Hitachi HPV091DS. And uh, the plate that we're going to take off is underneath here, four Allens. Take that off, and then they said to unplug these two solenoids up on top. So we're going to do that and, uh, and see what it does, see if I can get you a little closer to what I'm pulling off. Yep. So there's the plate or the tag, whatever, model tag. Under here, where you just saw it drip, that's the plate I'm going to pull off and spin around. So you can see it's four number six Allens that are holding it in. And then up on top those two solenoids the plug wires are there and they'll plug up the same both ways so 
put a zip tie on them or something so you can tell which one goes where so you don't hook them up backwards if you ever go the other way but right there is what i'm going to be pulling off so i'll set the camera up and let you watch what are these allen wrenches uh, it's just a different type of wrench. Do you play with them? You work with them. Daddy, you're stepping on my boots. Sorry. My work boots. Ooh, that's in there. Huh? That's really tight. That's really tight. The Allen screw that I'm taking out. Uh, here we go. One. And I don't know if there's going to be any fluid come out of this or if it'll be dry or what but there you go. Can I come in the bucket? Go ahead. hopefully a ton of fluid didn't come out but it very well may especially since I just started it and ran it maybe it won't though Hey bud, get get out of there until I get done with this. I don't want it to drop fluid and come down. Okay, come over here with me. Because I don't know what's going to happen. I may lose pressure. And I may lose gas? Uh, hydraulic fluid. I may have to get a hammer or something and peck on it to get it to come down. Be right back. Didn't find a hammer, but we got fencing pliers. Oh yeah, I'm about to get a handful. And I can't tell if there's an O-ring or a gasket or anything, but there's got to be something there. Okay. So, that came out and it's a little offset towards the hatch, towards the door. Get dirt in there. So it doesn't turn. There's an O-ring here. That thing is super hard. Wouldn't hurt to put a new one there. But let's see what the underside under there looks like. Here's a vet. went in there and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to turn it or if that plate inside there turns or what let me set this up try to turn that that plate okay so I pulled pulled this out and it said put it in limp mode just turn it to where the offset is back and push it back up in there and bolt it back down yeah, that always sounds a lot easier than, than it actually is. Um, I'd put it in, and it would stop about here. Unless I had it turned this way, then it would go into that hole. So I tried to spin the whole plate, thinking maybe that hole in there would turn with it and go to the back side. Couldn't get it to turn, tried putting a wrench on it, pliers, everything, trying to turn the whole plate. Wouldn't work. So I kept reading online. There are no videos on this. So hopefully this one will help somebody. And somebody posted on a forum to try taking this line, this pilot line. See if you can see that. Yeah, up on top 
runs from over here a little hard line up so I'd try removing that and it'll let some pressure off of it to uh see if it'll go up in there so i took this off and i still couldn't i mean i was just trying to push it with my hand i couldn't get it to push up or turn the piston or anything so i took my fencing pliers turned this to where the pin it's on the back side like it's supposed to be offset to the back and held it up up in there like where the four allens would mount up and then took pliers and braced it over here I don't know if you can see that. There's a like a blower fan almost. Over here. Braced it on that and then put it underneath the plate and just pried up on it. All, all it needed was to make a lot more pressure. I guess this piston in here had fluid on top of it. So taking that line loose and then pushing up on this really hard. And I still got a little ways to go. And it squirts fluid out of this hard line and it squirted all over my shirt and everything. So watch out. But pry there let me see if you guys can even see where i'm at yeah you can see so hold it in place a little bit put your bar there and just push up really hard <laughs> there's a little bit of fluid coming out of this line and it's slowly going up I guess that's all it needs just to get that fluid off the top side of it. And try not to get it all in your face. I wish I had a bigger pry bar. Big... Ugh. It was going so good earlier and I stopped to record it. I should have just kept going. Oh, there was a... Oh, crap. Okay. That's enough for the Allens to grab and suck it up there the rest of the way. There's a YouTube video of a guy like in a classroom setting. He's got one of these pumps tore down with a cutaway and everything. And that it kind of helped to show me what I was trying to move in there. It looks just like a piston with an O-ring on it. And I thought he was going to show me if I could twist it or push up or nothing, but he didn't. He just showed a cutaway of it. So I know it would go up and down because he talked about fluid being on top of it and below it. To allow how much pressure it's going to build. Because I knew it just had to go up a lot. So when I took that line off and uh got hydraulic fluid squirted all over me so now i'm gonna take my six mil and tighten these back up and then tighten that line up there on top so now i'm just gonna put the hard line back on They're not going to let you pet them, bud. They're not going to let you pet them. Okay, there's that. Top line on. He said to also undo these connectors. Let's see if I can do it without breaking the wires. All my lines tight and everything. I'm going to go fire it up, see what it does.
All right, guys. So before I'd have to turn the key, and then we had this to crank it. I don't know what changed, but now it'll crank with the key. It cuts off with the key. I think just jiggling some wires may have done that. This stuff still doesn't seem to change anything. This is our throttle. So instead of it being computer controlled throttle, now we just pick pick up and down on this and it's just cable that runs the, the fuel pump back on the engine. But everything is working. I mean with the with it in limp mode, working fine, it's definitely a lot slower. But it doesn't bog out. I pick up, push, but walk wherever I want. Did you guys but talk to your friend? Yeah, sure, what you got? Um when our cows walk, um the and then it's bedtime for them and they, they go back up there. And then they go all the way up into the climb. Up on the hill? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, seems to be working. I'm going to take it somewhere eventually and try to dig some, some heavy dirt, <laughs> see how it works with a load on it. But it's doing a lot better. You don't have to worry about choking it out or anything. Uh, kind of wondering if... I take that plate that had the plunger on it, the little stand pipe piece, the whatever the peg. Cut that peg a little bit so the plunger can come down a little bit more, but not all the way like full full power. I wonder if that would change anything. I mean, it'd be bad to mess up and not not be able to put it back in limp mode or whatever, but I mean, we've been running this thing for seven or eight years with the trouble before I've done this. I can't go in that bucket. <laughs> no, you can't go in the bucket. But, Why? Well, I mean, you can right now, but not while I'm running it. I go in it in a minute? No, I think I'm done. Oh, I gotta cut fire. I gotta dig dirt with this in a minute? No, I think we gotta cut some firewood. Tomorrow we're gonna use this? Mm, maybe. Not tomorrow, after I in I can out of the bucket. Okay. Can you tell everybody thank you for watching? Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.